There are few genres more iconic and entrenched within American culture than the Western. From endless pulp novels to some of the earliest movies ever created, the Western has been a mainstay within entertainment for a very long time. Though it has recently fallen into a slump within the realms of television and film, some amazing examples notwithstanding, Who? Who? Who stole the fucking dope? Cocksucker! Oh, Jesus. It is still very much alive in the world of video games. Red Dead Redemption 2 is a great game, not an unpopular opinion I know, but it bears repeating. From fun gameplay to the amazing detail of the setting, one can easily lose themselves in the world Rockstar created. Having said that though, there is an element which I believe is criminally underrated. The game's romance. Now, I don't mean romance in the traditional sense. Granted, that's present, but rather as a more classical idea, if you will. Themes of honor, courage, loyalty, brothers bound by more than just blood, standing with one another, and facing insurmountable odds. Though it's kind of difficult to describe, you should know it when you see it. As a prime example of what I'm getting at, just think back to this moment at the tail end of the game. At a critical junction, with Dutch losing it, both Sadie and Charles refuse to follow their leader's orders and choose to ride with Arthur instead. We're riding with you. Come on, man. It's a little thing, sure. However, if the moment that follows doesn't give you a throbbing erection, you, sir, don't have a pulse. Bearing all that in mind, if there is one issue that arises in the wake of Red Dead Redemption 2, it would be how it impacts the game which preceded it. Despite the massive role Arthur played in his life, it's odd that John never mentions him once. Now, I know the real reason why this is the case. The writers didn't think of Arthur yet, or he was simply a vague idea they hadn't fleshed out. In-universe, however, it just doesn't make much sense. I bring this up because, it is my belief, Rockstar has learned from this mistake and has already planted seeds for the next game in the series. Seeds which rely upon the romantic nature of the Western to be noticed. To avoid beating around the bush, I want everyone to think back to how the first Red Dead ended. Truly ended. Not with John at his ranch, but with Jack at a river. Hello everyone, I'm Bufire191, and welcome to Red Dead Redemption's next protagonist, a tinfoil theory. Red Dead Redemption 2 is chock full of subtle reincorporation and foreshadowing. So much so, that topic could be a video unto itself, However, admittedly, it would just evolve into me going, isn't that cool? Far, far too often. One of my favorite instances of the game's reincorporation, however, would be John's second name, Jim Milton. Due to how much of a ballsy fuck you it is to Agent Milton, the Pinkerton who captured Abigail, among other things. I bring this up because it, again, highlights a romantic aspect of the Western. Small details which are rather innocuous at first are chock full of meaning and serve to strengthen the narrative as a whole. John's second name could have been something random and unimportant. Instead, it serves as a reminder of Arthur's sacrifice, a reminder to run and never look back. It's only fitting then that the moment John abandons the Milton moniker and uses his real name once more, he looks back and sets into motion the events of the first game. Again, I could bang on and talk about the game's reincorporation at length to strengthen my upcoming tinfoil theory, however, I won't. If you want more examples, I recommend playing the game itself. You may be surprised by what you noticed. So let's get to the heart of things and talk about Jack. Everyone's favorite. Then you shot him like a duck! Let's, uh, let's just talk about Jack. In Red Dead Redemption's epilogue, Jack hunts down Agent Ross to avenge his father. After a brief exchange beside a river, the pair duel. Jack wins, Ross dies, the game's credits roll. I point out the river specifically because not only is this the place where the two individuals see each other for the last time, it is also where they meet. In Red Dead Redemption 2's second chapter, Abigail asks if Arthur can take Jack fishing. During their rather cute trip, however, Agent Milton appears with Agent Ross in tow. This fact, once more, ties back into the game's reincorporation, but possibly does far more than simply make the series' bookend even more impactful. Personally, I believe it foreshadows who the series' next protagonist will be. Mac Callender. Milton's conversation with Arthur touches on a few subjects, 
However, the Pinkerton mentions how his agency caught up with a shot up Mac and that his death was slow but merciful. Though this is done to taunt Arthur, this exchange is rather fascinating, mostly due to who is present and where it's held. It's something I can't help but take note of, especially when Mac is brought up by name, prompting Jack to ask about him on the ride back to camp. We'll also point out that Mac's death sounds similar to that of other Red Dead protagonists. Actually, a combination of the two when I think about it. It feels like Rockstar is drawing the player's attention to this individual with how this scene is constructed. Up until this point, there has been no real mention of Mac, sans one quick mention when in the mountains. Yet, he's brought up during a moment which mirrors the end of the first game. If this had happened in any other genre, perhaps any other series, I wouldn't be bringing this up. However, Red Dead, time and again, has given major meaning to minor events. We don't know who Mac was. However, from what little we're told about him, he sounds like an individual whose story could not only make for an interesting third entry in the series, with enough wiggle room to do something creative, but also add impact to that moment at the river. Every now and again, members of the gang will talk about Mac Callender and his brother Davey. Excluding Charles and Lenny, who I'll get to, everyone seems to have a positive opinion about the pair, or at the very least, has nothing negative to say. From camp conversations, we learn Bill had a high opinion of the brothers, that Karen misses busting their balls, and that Uncle once saw Mac take down 15 sailors, a story which suspiciously sounds like a mission, if I'm being honest. Overall, what is said about them is vague and nebulous, but the player gets a sense that the gang liked having them around, similar to Arthur, and that they'll be sorely missed. Something to take note of, however, is Lenny and his dislike of Davy Callender. Simply put, he viewed him as a dangerous fool and blamed him for things going poorly in Blackwater. At least twice during camp conversations, Lenny speaks ill of Davy, but never brings up Mac, which I find rather curious. Charles, on the other hand, after learning about Arthur's tuberculosis, tries to encourage his friend by stating he can still make amends unlike so many others. He then brings up how the Calendar Boys were a pair of vicious bastards, and that was all they were and ever will be. With Lenny, his perspective is focused on just one brother, Davy, which leads me to believe he has no opinion, or can't form one for reasons I'll get into, for Mac. Charles, however, is an interesting case. Before the start of Red Dead 2, Charles joined Dutch's gang only a few months prior. This is important to keep in mind, because the events of both games in the series transpire over the course of a handful of months. Arthur's story begins and ends in 1899, same with John in 1911. If Red Dead 3 followed Mac Callender, then Charles would be joining the gang during the character's most bloodthirsty period. As witnessed with the heartbreaking conversation Arthur has with the girls of the camp, regardless of honor level, when the player begins controlling the character, they begin killing a hell of a lot more than they normally would. If Charles saw Mac while he was under the player's control, he'd be seeing him at his most vicious. Unlike the others, be it Bill, Sean, Karen, Uncle, or the rest, Charles never got to see what Mac was like before everything got out of hand, thus providing context for what he said to Arthur. Branching off of that, both Lenny and Charles don't single out Mac Callender, unlike Davy, when speaking ill of the brothers. They're talked about as a pair, and things are always kept rather vague. We know about some things Mac has done, however, unlike Davy, we don't know much about his personality. Though others have a high opinion of him, he himself is an enigma. What I'm trying to get at here is this. If Mac Callender was the next game's protagonist, then Red Dead Redemption 2 has provided enough wiggle room and ambiguity for the character in question to be either low honor or high honor. Though Charles has a low opinion of the brothers, calling this ambiguity into question, it is focused on the brothers as a unit and was formed during the theoretical game's events. We know what Mac has done, but we don't know who he is. I understand my premise is a bit... Odd. I wouldn't call this video a tinfoil theory if it wasn't. However, I hope most of you can see where I'm coming from. Mac is an ambiguous character that was brought up during a scene which mirrors the first game's true ending. I believe Rockstar did this on purpose, that they learned from their mistakes with the first game and brought the individual up in passing to not only foreshadow a third entry, but also to embrace the genre's romance. Right now, I don't know what the mention of Mac adds to the scene at the river, other than what we're shown. However, if the third game does in fact follow him, it might be something substantial. 
it would add even more weight to Jack's final throwdown with Ross. He wouldn't be there just to avenge his father, but also Arthur, and perhaps even Mac. It's a display of loyalty, of honor, of courage, for a group of outlaws who found redemption at the end, and became heroes. It's the sort of romance the genre is built upon, and what, to me, makes it great. I'll admit, this is all built upon the premise that a third entry in the series, assuming of course we get a third entry to begin with, will follow Dutch's gang. If it doesn't, then uh, boy howdy, I kinda look like a fool. But, then again, that's kinda part for the course for these videos, so uh, bleh. Personally, I'd love to see a game follow Dutch's gang at its peak, since that would be a nice narrative arc unto itself, with two being its fall and one its total end. However, knowing my luck, it would follow the exploits of Young Uncle, which might actually be amazing the more I think about it. But with that said guys, I've been Bufire191, I'll see all of you next time, let me know what you thought in the comments down below, I can never do my outro right, whatever. Goodbye, everybody.